there and then they have like different type of uh, grants that you can apply um, based on industry, based on race, based on uh, different, you know, denominators. So um, use other people's money. Don't use their money. <laughs> That's the quote for the show, Matt. Use, I'm writing it down. <laughs> use other people's money. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the CM Mentors Podcast, where each week, industry-leading guests share their insights and guidance to help the next generation in construction management. My name is Matt Graves. My co-host each week is Kyle Grandell. What's up, Kyle? Hey, how you doing, Matt? Good. Good. Us, Haiti. And this week's guest is the owner of Resilient Freight Solutions, Haiti Clark. Hey, Haiti. Hi, guys. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. So, uh, thank you for the invite. Yeah. So, for those that don't know you, I know there's a few people in the audience probably that came from from you from inviting them. But for those that don't know you, uh, can you give us a little short background of yourself? Yes, absolutely. So, Heidi Clark, um, I live in Dallas, Texas, but this awesome accent is a Puerto Rican accent. So, I was born and raised in Puerto Rico, and I've been in Texas for almost ten years now. Um, my background comes from uh, sales and marketing for different uh, manufacturers, uh, mainly in the food and beverage and consumer goods. And then uh, three years ago, I decided to open my small business. So um, I'm the owner of Resilient Freight Solutions, which is a um, freight brokerage uh, agency here in uh, Dallas, uh, serving manufacturers, distributors, uh, construction, industry, CPGs, and food and beverage as well. So We're happy to have what you. Else? Um, and I'm a cowboy fan. <laughs> yeah, last time we, yeah, last time we talked, you were talking about being a cowboy fan and being a Texas Ranger fan. So I had to wear my Houston Astro shirt today. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> I, I shouldn't wear my my cowboy jersey. I, uh, well, I have my. Oh, uh, there you go. I don't have. I don't know. I'm a Texan fan, so I don't keep any of their memorabilia around right now. <laughs> it's rough. <laughs> it's rough. Well, being a cowboy fan is rough too because yeah. It just, uh, they break my heart every year, but it's, it's part of the love, right? There's always next year, right? <laughs> well, I have mine. Exactly. Every year, right we, it's our year. <laughs> That's the Vikings? <laughs> this is the Vikings. There's nothing here, by the way, for those that can't see. <laughs> so thanks for joining us, Haiti. Uh, I, want, I mean, we're really excited to bring you on because, you know, right now is such an interesting time in the supply chain. And um, so I just want to talk about, like, some of the supply chain struggles, uh, you know, the, the purpose of this podcast is kind of give back to the construction management world and kind of have your share some of your insights with, you know, you order a piece of equipment and then it magically shows up on the job site. So what happens between that point and that point? So, right. uh, you know, can you give us a little bit of just talk a little bit about kind of the current uh, supply chain struggles and then the shipping struggles that are going on right now? I think that, uh, well, uh, definitely, uh, there was, uh, you know, after COVID, I think everything just before COVID and after COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, so definitely, the, you know, the disruption with COVID and then the, the lack of drivers, uh, I think it's one of the main challenges in the industry. Mm -hmm. However, the lack of drivers, uh, I was reading this article in the New York Times that is kind of like the real reason uh, uh, of uh, this shortage of drivers and then Pretty much is because the drivers are retiring. They're getting, you know, they're getting older. And then the, the newer generation, um, it's just easier to be an influencer on Instagram or Facebook than being a truck driver, you know? Uh, uh, you, podcast you, you know, host. You yeah. <laughs> oh, podcast <okay. laughs> <laughs> Just do like a little podcast <laughs> in my basement. Uh, but uh, I mean, it's not it's not an easy task. Sometimes, uh, you know, the truck drivers, they, they are away from home for days, weeks. Even month depends the, if they have like a project, in, you know, uh, in another state that, you know, that they have to do it. Um, for example, my brother is a truck driver and then uh, he's a, a type of a service is this a long end dump. So he, he go to a lot of uh, um, sites collecting kind of like sand, gravel and all this stuff. But uh, uh, in during the winter, the, I mean, here it was really bad, the, the weather. So it's one thing that affects too. So he had to move pretty much for uh, like three weeks to Mississippi to be able to work because uh, here a lot of, uh, you know, sites that were closed because of the weather was bad. So, you know, it's just, it's just a, a, a hard life, but um, 
But uh, I mean, I'm always uh, really uh, grateful for the truck drivers because everything we have, our clothes, our computer, our your headsets, came in a truck. So um, that's it. That, that's one of the challenges. And then also the uh, you know the uh, uh, gas prices, you know, just coming up and down, up and down. Right now, actually, right now the rates are really good, very competitive. Is because the the, the, the gas price is uh, is lower. And then usually the first the first quarter usually the rates per mile are um, low. Mm. So that answered the question. A little summary there. <laughs> Yeah, actually, actually, really quick here. So, Haiti, you mentioned bad weather. I'm from Minnesota, so please explain. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, in Texas, like for example, a little just like a slick of uh, you know of, of, of ice in the on the road is very different than in Minnesota because we don't know how to drive in snow yeah, or you know not. in that kind of bad conditions. I'm just, uh -huh, giving, you, so, I'm just uh, giving you a hard time. When, when I worked down here in South Carolina, we got some <laughs> snow and it shut the place down for about two days. But I, I mean, I get it. The infrastructure is yeah. totally different. So. Right, right. Yeah, we, we just shut down for three days because we, we just have like a, a quarter of an inch of snow or something. It's just like sleek, you know. <laughs> so uh, definitely it's just uh, very different. Um, and then usually the drivers, if they're not used to drive on those conditions, then they just can't work. So yeah. it's... Uh, you know, it's hard to uh, uh, drive a, tr a truck with uh, a, at least 40, 45, 80,000 uh, pounds in the back, you know. It's hard to stop those those big boys. It's <laughs> dangerous real quick. It's just We're not meant to, yes. we don't clear it off at all. We don't have the equipment. So they just say the word snow or ice in Texas and we just we say, yeah, I just go home for a couple of days. Yeah. <laughs> Got it right, correct. Right, and now that, well, now that I mentioned how heavy a truck is, this is just a public service announcement. Never caught in front of a truck that you don't have space just to accelerate because it's very hard for them to stop so just for your safety never cut in front of a truck <laughs> i see people do that all the time i'm like man you're just asking for it so. yeah and they also stay uh, stay away from the right side of the truck because they can't see you mm -hmm. so i usually try to either stay behind or just accelerate and go in front <laughs> uh, on the right side of the truck, especially driving to Houston, you know, I I forty five is gonna be a little tricky because it's only two lanes. So it's, it's um, a, as you drove it this weekend, it can get kind of sketchy in a couple spots. <laughs> yeah. So. And then they, you know they next to each other and try to and I yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a truck who was pulling a <laughs> like a horse trailer, I guess, and this guy like I don't know what his problem was, but he kept swerving in front of people, like blocking people. I was just like, jeez, man, like I saw him do that for five people. And then I started to pass them, and I was like, "Nope, I'm just gonna chill." So, well, so, some laws are time sensitive. So, um, you know, if they don't arrive at a certain time, they, maybe that is gonna disrupt that supply chain as well. Maybe those, uh, you know, those horses had to get to the rodeo. They need, <laughs> they need to get to the rodeo because if the rodeo starts at seven. If you get there at seven thirty, <laughs> you know, just disrupting the, the show. That's crazy. <laughs> So, you know, this is kind of about construction management and stuff. So do you have any tips or advice on, you know, kind of construction managers that, you know, kind of maybe the ways to help manage deliveries or manage uh, shipments or freight or to ma just make base their projects a little bit smoother or better? I think that the, the main, the main uh, recommendation is that, uh, you know, if you're working with brokers like myself or just direct to carriers, give as much information as possible like where is the site located uh, is it limit limited access do you have space to park uh do you need to you know is it's in a corner that maybe the truck cannot get there uh do you have uh, uh, what is going to be the process for unloading so all the, those kind of like special instructions will make your life easier and then you can also save some money because some, if you don't, if the most, the more information you give, the more accurate the rates are gonna be, especially if you work with a with a with a broker, uh, because pretty much what we do is kind of like a bidding process of, okay, I have this low, is going this, uh, this commodity is going this place, uh, um, and then you can be more efficient. But definitely, just give as, as much information as possible. Also, timing. I need this, uh, you know, uh, truckload of uh, lumber by 7 a.m. tomorrow. So, uh, you know, and also try to give at least two hour window. That's kind of like the standard, if you, you know, that because, you know, things happen, mm -hmm. they can be stuck in traffic or right. someone caught in front of them and they have a little accident. But uh, definitely uh, just, uh, you know, be clear with the information and then uh, the, the more information, the better, I think. 
Man, I can't tell you. That's actually really good advice. I can't tell you how many times when I was on the subcontractor side, you know, I would never order the stuff. Our purchasing guys would typically order the stuff, but I'd be on the on the site and I'd get the phone call from the driver, right? And he'd say, "Hey, where's your loading dock?" I'm like, "Dude, we're a construction site. We don't have a loading dock." Like, he's like, "No, they told me to pull to the loading dock." I'm like, "We'll try to figure it out." But you know, a, a 15 minute delivery turns into a four hour delivery because we're trying to figure out how to get it out of the back of the truck. So. Exactly. Well, and then on delivery, usually it usually kind of like the, the, the standard is two hours. So if they spend on your site unloading for more than two hours, it's like it's like the, a lawyer, the, the clock start ticking and then that's money. So you have to pay more for that uh, for that extra extra time and layovers and all that stuff. Uh, also, you know, the limited access to you is like, a, OK, you, you know, to, in order to enter to the job site, you have to go to this really bad road. Mm. They need to know, know that because so they can be uh, ready if they need. For example, if they're in Minnesota and there's a lot of snow, they need to know so, so they can put the chains, they put some chains around the, the tires so they can have better traction, especially if they, you know, they're hauling like a really heavy stuff in the back. So, what's the information is key. <laughs> I, I feel like there's a breakdown a lot in that and what I mean by that so like if you're working for like I work for a mechanical and plumbing some contractor right and so like my, my purchasing guy might have ordered a bunch of widgets for instance right and he orders them from a distributor who orders them from the factory and so the factory may be coordinating the shipping and so there's multiple layers like do you have any tips on how to make sure that communication gets all the way to the guy behind the steering wheel well, uh, usually, you know, uh, carriers, they, they work with their dispatchers. So the dispatcher pretty much are the, kind of like the, 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 the direct uh, um, link to, to the driver. But nowadays, it's all about technology. For example, I had a meeting this morning with a, with a great uh, lady that she owns a, a trucking company. And then she's developing this uh, uh, app or you know, platform where you can direct chat with the driver and then, uh, for example, if the driver is Puerto Rican and doesn't know English, or you know they have from other countries, they can reply in their in their uh, native uh, language, and then the app will translate to the person that needs the information to English. So definitely, I think that uh, the the technology is advancing, and then it's going to make that process easier, and then just streamline the process, you know. Um, so yeah, technology is key that nowadays is... too. <laughs> That's cool because you're talking about you know uh, uh, kind of a workforce issue. I mean, it can definitely help fill that gap too if there's you know some immigrants or something that come on and maybe they don't speak the language and it can definitely help them get a kind of assimilate a little bit better. Correct, exactly. If you're gonna send you know those special instructions, like hey, yeah, when, when you arrive on the job site, go to the back. Uh, you know, instead of going to the front, go through the back. So you know, chat with them and then they receive that information before they arrive to to, to the job site. So, um, hmm. yeah, so definitely the future, the future is bright for, for technology and uh, logistics. So hopefully it's going to get better. It's going to make an impact in every industry and all the way up until yes, yes. uh, Elon builds his self-driving semi trucks. <laughs> is that, oh my God. Yeah. Is that a yeah, real? You always need, to, well, you always going to need a human. I know I was reading that they, uh, I'm not too, you know, but I was reading that they only can go kind of like straight line and then they were testing like I think around 500 miles but just kind of like straight line but then you will have to change a lot of uh, warehouses they need to be closer to the oh, highway yeah. so that, that kind of things because they don't they cannot go you know um, to a you know remote area so it just straight point A to point B so you got to get to and that may even make it harder because then you got a lot more shuffling around so if you drive it from point A to point B, from warehouse to warehouse, then you got to redistribute, put it on the, the delivery trucks, and then you got all those. Correct, exactly. For example, if you, I think that, you know, for example, I-45 from Dallas to Houston, then you load on, um, you know, right on, uh, the, right outside Dallas. So it's going to go all the way maybe to Galveston, but it, it, you not, it's not going to take any exits. Mm. So you have to have some kind of, uh, um, uh, you know, system to unload on roadside or something i'm not sure how that's gonna work but you you need the human factor anyways <laughs> because someone has to go to that truck reload it or just you know unhook and then they do like a power on what is called power only which is just the truck 
hauling the, the, the trailer and then you just take it I from there. So. so it's basically just a train that you drives on the road. Because <laughs> that's all a train does. It gets from point A to point B, yeah, then you so gotta just, deal with yeah, it. Just it. use rail. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, rail, a very awesome rail system here in the US. So, and it's available. I mean, they were, they were um, uh, you know, these all unionized, so they, there were some, uh, you know, um, attempts to uh, uh, strike, but uh, thank God that didn't happen. That was going to be messy <laughs> for sure so i'm glad that that didn't happen so yeah i just saw a headline today that a, another train had derailed is it just do you know much about that is 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 the rail infrastructure just completely in shambles so well i'm not i, I don't do too much intermodal uh rail so i'm not you know what i read is whatever you know whenever i receive my daily uh, news so i'm not too familiar with that um with the infrastructure of the rail I got you. Um, I just saw somebody post it, it may have been on LinkedIn or something like that, and he was going on this rant about how, you know, American infrastructure was built 60 years ago, and they're older, right? And it's all just kind of crumbling at this point, and hopefully we get it all fixed soon. But anyway, that's a talk for another day. Uh, yes. But, you know, they're talking about, you know. Well, the still need some investment. Too. What's that? I think the highways, and, you know, I think that there were some, uh, uh, budgeting proposals just to, to, to better the infrastructure. I, I think it's much needed. Yeah, sure. we'll see how much goes to the actual infrastructure. But <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> that's, a, that's a conversation with our coffee. And that's a <laughs> coffee or beer conversation right there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, I'll cut you off a second ago. Kyle, were you about to say something? Well, I was just going to say a question for Haiti. She mentioned earlier about um, having you know, retiring truck drivers as part of an issue. And I'm just thinking back to 2020 when the pandemic was, was you know, in full force. We had issues with truck drivers getting more or less diverted. They had other loads that were more important than our construction materials. So I'm just curious if you're kind of seeing that still taking effect now, if it's much of an issue. And if it is, is there any way we can, we can address it, do you think? Well, the industry is, uh, is very uh, rate driven. So, of course, if they usually, you know, you can send the load confirmation and everything is good, set to go. But if they, if they, someone offer, it's it's kind of like a bidding game. So, if someone mm -hmm. offers maybe five cents per mile more, they're gonna go for that one. So that's why, you know, uh, it's very important to uh, uh, do a vetting process of the carriers that you're using. Uh, make sure that they are reliable, that they, they're, you know, the on-time ratings are good. Um, nowadays, they're, they're in the industry, there's something called double brokering. That's something that, uh, um, that uh, first, is illegal. So pretty much what they're doing is like you hire a truck and then they, t they tell you, yes, for this project, I have four trucks, but they don't have anything. So they are, they have, they sub hire other trucks, but they, uh, they don't, you hire the company that has the, in the insurance, but they sub hire someone else that is not covered for, by your insurance. And then they, they move the load, but they, they don't get paid because you pay the A. It's kind of like complicated, but it's something that is happening a lot. And then uh, a lot of truck drivers are uh, afraid of having like a double brokering. Uh, happening to them because they can move the load and they don't get paid. So um, that happens too. Kind of like a sketchy I didn't do a good, job, a good job explaining, but you can Google double brokering and then you will have better information there. <laughs> I'm writing that down. Maybe I'll put a link in the uh, in the show notes because that sounds interesting. Yes, it's very interesting and it's affecting the, 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 the industry uh, a lot, especially, uh, you know, um, if, you hire a truck. I need this uh, load to be delivered by seven a.m. and the truck never, never was never there. And then you already, you know, prepaid or something like that. So it's just it's not good. Yeah. I uh, I had a note here from our first conversation. We were kind of pre-talking. It said power of networking. What was the power of networking? Was that something we talked about? Well. Yeah, absolutely. The power of networking. This conversation <laughs> is thanks to the power of networking. Uh, uh, I met Kyle through a good friend, Alexandra, that I met her at a networking event that it was not related to construction, but she was so nice and we kind of befriended. Uh, we had coffee and then she introduced me via email to Kyle. And then we started being LinkedIn friends. And then now because of them too, now Matt, I know you. 
and we're having these awesome conversations. So uh, definitely, you know, networking and then building building relationships are key uh, for anything you do. Uh, if you're a small business owner or, uh, you know, the construction manager or um, it's, it's, it's very important to have these kind of uh, good relationships. It's kind of it's kind of funny. It's kind of a full circle thing because you said you met Kyle through Alexandra and I knew her through college, which has kind of been a it's been a weird circle of like meeting people. And she's introduced us. She met, introduced us to Alex Vichera. He was on here a few weeks ago, and I actually did it uh, yes. before we started the actual podcast. Uh, she did I did like a, a interview like this for the newsletter and stuff like that. It's been it's been cool, and it, it's just the people that we've been able to introduce to each other. It's just yeah, she's definitely a good connector for sure. Definitely. And I met I met Alex through. The, the golfer through her because she we have like this uh, uh, ladies and golfing uh, event and he was kind of like a, a, an instructor there so oh that's um, too yeah, cool power of networking <laughs> is it I'm not a golfer by the way I don't know <laughs> I mean I go to top golf and uh, it's sad but uh, anyway <laughs> someday I'll learn <laughs> I'm not a golfer either I like to go play but that's that's yeah. that's it I like to I like to do it. Yeah. I'm not breaking. Yeah, don't stuff. invite me to a tournament unless you need a driver. I can drive the cart, but I, I'm not a good golfer. We played in a charity tournament. Uh, I don't know, say three, six months ago, something like that. And my team won. We were actually we didn't like, we didn't win any prizes. We're walking off, and we heard our name calls. And we're like, what is that? And we turn around, walk back up there. We won the toilet bowl award. We won last place, and they gave us these little. <laughs> I, was, I got one in my truck. I should bring it in here, but it's it literally is a little toilet bowl about this big, and have a golf ball sitting in it. I'm like. It's like, I'll walk back for this. <laughs> well, you, you want something, that. that's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was very proud, so. Um, <laughs> that's funny, that's a good one, actually. So just a little housekeeping. If anybody's in the uh, in the audience, uh, feel free to put your any questions, comments, say hi, let us know you're there in the comment box, or um, you know, turn on your camera and join us, join the conversation. Let's make this a fun one. So, okay. One thing I want to touch on, Haiti, is, uh, you know, this is Women in Construction Week. Um, you're not necessarily in construction, but kind of on the outside. But uh, you are a women business enterprise, right? Yes, yes, sir. So I want to talk about that a little bit and kind of like what's what are the, some of the <laughs> steps? Um, you know, how can other people, you know, get involved in it and kind of if they're maybe a woman wanting or really just a minority, any business can they can they all work kind of in parallel, right? Um, kind of what are some of the benefits and then kind of maybe what are some of the steps of how to get there? Absolutely. So there are different certifications out there that you can, uh, you know, um, um, receive. Uh, uh, the, the one that I have is the WBE, which is Women Business Enterprise. So there are different organizations that they, you know, um, um, certi they can certify you. The one that I use is called WeBank, W-B-E-N-C. And then they're kind of like the, the most the bigger ones. So in order to be women on certified, um, you need to be at least the ownership of the company has to be 51% or more. I mean, you or 100%, that would be awesome. Uh, but if you are in a partnership, the, the woman have to be, or women, because they can, you know, have right. 30 and 20. Uh, one, um, they has to be a woman. Um, uh, they, uh, the certification pretty much, um, they go through your finances but it's just to, to make sure that, you know, the, 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 the company's women own and then uh, that you, you know, have a good relationship with Uncle Sam, that you file your taxes and all that kind of stuff. So it's just like a vetting process of uh, the company. Um, there's also the uh, MBE, which is Minority Business Enterprise, and then th those go more to your background uh, if you are Hispanic or a person of, you know, a person of color or, uh, uh, of, you know, from other countries. Definitely, you have to be U.S. citizen or at least have a legal uh, uh, resident of the U.S. in order to be able to be uh, certified. Uh, benefits, uh, definitely, for example, uh, nowadays, a lot of uh, corporations, they have their DEIB policies, which is uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. And then some of them, as a policy, uh, for example, the other day I was in a presentation and then this uh, 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 construction project, they have a goal of hiring at least 32% of their vendors have to be women business enterprises. So uh, it's not that with the certification you're going to have 
contracts like they're gonna just fly from the sky you have to make it work no but uh, definitely the certification give the you know the 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 the, the business at least a chair uh, uh to the table access and then priority in terms of the consideration of your business you have to do the leg work you know have a good presentation uh, have good uh, you know uh, right. uh, price efficiencies and all that kind of stuff but uh, definitely the certifications help and then also it works for private uh, corporations but also to work with the government you know government is always you know very busy uh, building uh, schools and uh, different uh, other uh, uh, infrastructure um, uh, projects as well have you seen it have you seen a big improvement since you became a wbe to like basically your uh contracts and to getting more work people are replying better to my emails for sure and then my approach uh, also the power of networking uh these uh, with the uh, we bank uh, actually there's a big big, big conference uh, in the, the week of march 21st which around four thousand women business owners certified are gonna be there. So it's just, just the access to to those kind of uh, corporations. Like I said, I have to work my magic and then build those relationships. Right. But definitely the, the, thanks to the certification, I'm gonna have access to those big corporations and other small business owners for sure. That's pretty cool. We used to work for a federal contracting company too. I've kind of done a few different things, but we were a uh, uh, minority owned business, small business. And uh, it, I definitely saw you know how it could People will return your phone calls, especially you know, especially when in construction when they're starting to trying to hit some of those percentages and stuff like that, and um, and a lot of them too. You still got to be a small business, right? You got to be underneath a certain threshold, so certain businesses will graduate well, out of it. So that's an interesting uh, uh, question because uh, did you know that a small business is a business with 500 employees or less, oh. or 27 million or less? So that's something that, uh, you know, uh, that needs to be changed. And then there's a lot of, uh, um, uh, you know, ad ad advocacy for have a declassification of micro business versus a small business. And then how to change that because I'm a small business, but I can compete with a $27 million company, you know? So uh, definitely that's uh, something that, uh, I think it needs to change. It's just, uh, just uh, a personal uh, opinion, it has to. The, those levels have to to decrease Kyle, <laughs> or change the name to maybe medium to large. <laughs> Kyle, you got a few hires, hires to make before you hit 500 employees, right? Uh, just a couple, yeah. And, and, and the revenue, I mean, I'm close, but not, not quite 27, <laughs> I guess. That's a joke, for you. by the way. <laughs> Kyle, if you don't know, Kyle's got, well, you got two employees, three, there's like three of y'all? I got I have two full time, and I have a ben I have a virtual bench. I call it of, of ten ninety nine contractors I could use. So. That's awesome. Yeah. So I think they bumped that up because I feel like when we were, hey, it could be different programs because the government has way different programs all the time. You look at different things. But I thought there was a ten million dollar threshold where you graduated out of it. Maybe that was a different program we were in, but they could have inflation. You know, they could have bumped it way up. Yeah, so I think it's twenty seven. I think the, I think I think that's the number, but but definitely the amount of employees is just. Four ninety nine or, 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 or less um, to be. Yeah, that's a, that's a large business. business. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, <laughs> Five hundred employees. That's a lot of people. <laughs> So yeah, so definitely, you know, the certifications is just that that access, and then you know, there's a lot of companies that they have that just because of policy, they have to uh, have uh, the you know the inclusion of uh, certified businesses. So um, it's it's a really actually it's not a, a complicated process if you have all your paperwork, you know, uh, organized. So uh, it, for any any new business owners or young business owners, or if you're planning to have a, a, a a business is very important that you have all those document documents organized and then you know where they are uh, because you will need it if you if you're gonna file for the certification so is it something you did yourself or I mean you don't need an outside company to help you walk you through it right so there are companies that they offer that service I like to do the things myself so I mean uh, you just kind of like register on their of these uh, uh, entities that certify and then uh, they give you access to this portal and then they usually all these uh, uh, organizations use the same portal uh, it's just so they have they know what other certifications you have um, 
but I have the WBE and then I have the, uh, in Texas it's called the Hub HUB, which is the historically underutilized businesses. So that one is good if you want to do a business with the, with the government. That's what we were. Right? Well, I don't know. We were a couple different ones. But I know we were hub, hub business. <laughs> there, there, there are a few. There are a few. There's the WOSB and the yada yada. All this kind of. You started looking into it. It's a, it's an onion. You start pulling back all the layers, and it's just, I don't know. It's all of the government bureaucracy. There's more stuff there, and so there's a lot. I guess the more there's, story. There's a lot of opportunities there. So if people dig in and yes, find it. Yes, they are. And then there. I mean, like, I'm I'm Hispanic, but you know, I always. I learned, I think maybe two or three years ago, that I'm considered a woman of color. <laughs> I didn't know that because, uh, you know, so, you know, you're Hispanic, and if, you know, you're considered a, a woman of color and there are a lot of, uh, you know, opportunities in terms of certifications or opportunities for to do business with corporations that they, um, you know, kind of like, pri I don't think they prioritize, but at least they, they, they look at you differently and then they give you at least the opportunity to, to pitch that, that business. Hmm. We're gonna say something. So, yeah, there's a lot. Of, there's a, a lot. A lot of help. A lot of opportunities out there that maybe you don't. All you know, the, the government has a lot of budget to to promote the small businesses, but sometimes people they don't use it because they don't know that yeah. the, those. Uh, so that's why I'm a, a, a true ambassador of people like, are you certified? Get certified. <laughs> I think that's that is a problem i think there's it's just a lack of knowledge or you know a lot of people start a business mm -hmm. and they don't know that those are opportunities they don't know that they can open some doors for them so i think it definitely needs people Perfect. like you out there that are spreading the message and at least telling people hey go do it <laughs> exactly like the other day i was talking to um you know besides selling trucking services i i love to connect businesses and uh, just at least give a little my two cents so i was uh, on the phone with this lady that she has uh, promotional items uh uh, company and then she she thought that she's like oh I cannot get certified because you know her dad is co he co-owns the company and I she thought that she needed to be a hundred percent owner of the company it's like no just change the, the you know the, the the corporate the LLC agreement and then just put, set you as 51 percent and then uh, just by the, that 51 percent you can get certified so she didn't know that. So it's just, I think, like you say, it's just like a lack of information uh, that, uh, I don't know. And it's probably, if you ask anybody, they're like, it's on the internet. Well, if you've ever been to the SBA website, like it's not easy to, I don't know if it's through the SBA, but I'm just <laughs> imagining all those websites are like, you click through links and the yeah. links are just garbage. <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, uh, going back to your question, there are some individuals that they help you know, uh, people to get certified and that that's their business, that their services, that uh, the service that they uh, require, but you can do it yourself. You do have to uh, pay a, a fee and it's, it depends on the type of certification is the fee that you pay and then you renew uh, every year. So uh, it's very important that you start the renewal process at least to a couple of months because it takes, like pretty much they have to uh, analyze everything again mm -hmm. for the renewal. So it's, it's very important that you keep your uh, all your paperwork uh, organized. And that fee, that's not a big barrier. It's affordable fee, which you know, can keep people out. Yeah, absolutely. Like for example, the the WBE is around two, two hundred and fifty or three fifty. It's not more than than uh, four hundred dollars, something like that. You know, the more certifications, then that's a, it's right. an investment. But uh, but I think it's just a nominal uh, amount uh, compared to the you know the opportunities that you can have. Uh, uh, after you're certified. That's awesome. Were you about to say something a second ago, Kyle? I feel like I cut you off. Well, I was just going to ask about, um, so Haiti, in, in your field and in the networking that you've been doing, have you found opportunities to either either get or receive mentorship? I know that that's a big thing for, for listeners, is if they, if they get into the field, how do they get some mentors, or maybe they want to provide the mentorship. So have you come across that in, in what you do? Yes. or And if you have, um, how? That's a great question, Kyle. Yes, I've been uh, lucky enough that, uh, you know, because of the networking and different organizations that I'm part of, I have received some um, a, a mentorship, right? Right now, I'm doing a mentorship with the Hispanic Alliance of uh, Entrepreneurs. I think that's the, it's, it's called Mujeres de Ace. So pretty much it's like a, a, a 12 week program where they're helping me with uh, identifying my 
value proposition, helping me with my pitch presentation, uh, uh, with my uh, business plan. And it was free. Uh, it was, it's, it's worth like thousands of dollars, but thanks to the uh, local Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, they recommended me to the program and then I was selected. Uh, I'm also, after that one, I'm doing another one with the NASDAQ for uh, women entrepreneurs. It's, it's also free. And then you have access to, to these, uh, 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 you know, uh, great uh, mentorships. And then also there's a program called SCORE, S-C-O-R-E. They're in all the states, and then they, uh, I think it's funded by SBA, but they give free mentorship to small business owners in different areas. If you need help with marketing, if you need help with sales, like right now I have a mentor that he's helping me with my with my sales uh, uh, pitch. Uh, so, and it's also free. I love that word. <laughs> so uh, uh, definitely, you know, Chambers of Commerce, they have these programs, uh, another, uh, um, the uh, we bank they have a you know women of color cohort and they, they have all the different cohorts that you have access to you know people that they be in business forever and then you can learn from them so there are programs with mentors but it's also also it, you know by uh, by being part of the networking and in different organizations you can have like a indirect ne uh, mentors that you can you know just those friends that you can always you know pick up the phone and then hey you know, ask them questions like, hey, I, I have this situation. What, what do you think I, I can do? So um, um, uh, different organizations that I'm part of, I'm part of the Regional Hispanic Contractors Association here in Texas. Um, they, they pretty much, so it's kind of like a construction chamber of commerce. I'm part of the National Association of Women Business Owners, uh, NABO, and then they have chapters all over the US and then uh, uh, for cities as well, that's a great organization as well. Uh, actually, NAVO, uh, they have mentorship programs and then NAVO, this organization was the one that um, advocated for women to, fi uh, to uh, file for loans under their name. So what I mean is like before 1987 or something like that, any women that wanted a loan for their business, the husband or their son have to sign with her. Wow. 1987? So, uh, that was just 87 or 88. Wow. So, uh, so you can, you can Google crazy. that. I went the women. So this is the, you know, International Women's uh, uh, History Week. So it's very important to know that. So NAVO was kind of like one of the organizations that helped uh, advancing that women can ask for money for their business and then they don't need the help of a, of a male. Uh, and then definitely, you know, the. Uh, we bank uh, organization always is another another national you know na nationwide uh, organization that offer all these kind of uh, programs i mean uh, i apply to everything because you never know these these are free free programs you know what can happen that they say like no we're boo or, you know we're full or whatever right. but if you see any any uh, opportunities for uh, mentorship programs or uh, you know cohorts uh, apply i mean it's awesome it's awesome you feel like you've it's got free, ed free education. <laughs> do you feel like you've got better value out of a one-on-one -on -one mentorship, like a mentor, mentoree, or kind of a cohort of peers? What's been a better? Has one been better than the other, or just kind of they both kind of have a place? I think that they both have a place. Uh, the 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 one-on-one -on -one definitely they 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 go more in depth on your needs, but the ones the you know the cohorts and then having a, a different perspective of businesses, different type of businesses mm -hmm. that and then different challenges as well help you to kind of like understand like i'm not the only one that is in that position you know uh, so i think that they both have a value so if you if you can do both do it um uh, because it's, it's it's beneficial i mean uh, i mean i work since i was you know a teenager and then i i mean i went to school i have a master's degree in marketing but doing this cohorts i learned something new every day <laughs> that maybe i didn't learn in college so um uh, yeah, definitely. I, I recommend that anyone uh, do these kind of like a mentorship uh, programs, especially if they're free. Yeah. That's what I've always been. I don't. I, me and Kyle's talked about this a little bit, but I've always kind of been against the mentor. Like, no, I'm going to figure it out myself, and I'm going to take a little bit from all these different people and just kind of put it all together and kind of against like the idea of a formal mentorship. But I've kind of found myself in a couple loosely organized mentor slash peer groups sort of things. And like, I'm like, yeah. man, this has been like, I can see how, you know, just you kind of spitballing something and they just, it just might have bounced it off of. And 
um, especially in the construction industry, I think so many people keep their secrets close together. So if you're in the construction industry and maybe you can find yourself in a peer group of people not in your same, where a lot of us are regionalized. There's some nationwide companies, but um, if you can definitely, if you're a smaller company, you can like get a peer from all these different companies and you kind of share your notes and share your experiences, and share your secrets. And like, you're not really, you're not, it's not your competitor, right? Um, that's something Kyle's talked about, about having mentors and coaches and that sort of stuff. And I know he's, he's way ahead of me in that, in that regard. Well, we all think we have these secrets in the industry, and here's a great pro tip. They're not really secrets. We all think we're the only ones that know them. No, that's not true at all. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. But people will hold them like they're secrets. They don't, te- like, yeah, they, they don't talk they about do. it. And, uh, well, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a true believer of collaboration. I think it's part of my core values. Um, it, you know, I think that the, 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 the cake is big enough for everyone to have a piece of it. Uh, so, I mean, I think that we're stronger together if we do good collaboration in good faith. Mm-hmm. You know, some people uh, might be a little tricky there. But um, but definitely, you know, this kind of uh, having access to perspective of other business owners or people in business, yeah. people in construction, it just helps to, to you know, to kind of like a, uh, with your accountability too, uh, because you know accountability is not what you did wrong; it's just what you can own. You know, you own your your mistakes and how you can learn from them, and, or, or how can you learn from other people's mistakes? Like, I invested twenty million dollars, and then you're like, okay, I'm not gonna do that. So, um, I don't know. You can definitely learn faster whenever people are sharing their mistakes. You don't have to learn it the hard way, and they can learn yeah. from your mistakes, and you can just accelerate. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like what? Uh, one uh, common uh, uh, nugget or you know recommendation that I that I've been learning in all these you know networking and going to panels and all this stuff is like if you're uh, starting a business, don't use your own money. There's a lot of help from the government that you grants that you can apply to. Don't use your money. Use other people's money, uh, and. It, and I think it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Just it's a, it's a less risk for sure. You know, SBA has a lot of programs. There's these uh, a few websites that uh, you can apply for grants. There's one called Hello Alice, uh, and then that uh, website you can go there, and then they have like different type of uh, grants that you can apply, um, based on industry, based on race, based on uh, different you know denominators. So. Um, Use other people's money. Don't use their money. <laughs> That's the quote for the show, Matt. Use, I'm writing it down. Use other people's money. <laughs> all right, we got it. That's a wrap, folks. That's, that's all we need. We took us 42 minutes to get there. <laughs> hey, it's better than last time. No. Secure, gonna, <laughs> secure your own money. Yes. We're going to see who, can, who listens to the end. So we can put all the good gold nuggets at the end. There right. we go. <laughs> You said that site. I'm going to link that site. I'm gonna, I'll share that site. It was Hello Alice. Hello Alice. Yes. Okay. Cool. Cool. I'll cool. Put it in the chat. Can I put it in the chat here? I think so. So. Business grants. Yeah, and there are different programs. Like for example, uh, Ver- Verizon. They have not to. Sorry, I don't know if they're uh, sponsor or not. But they have like this also a uh, grant program, and then all the also like you know financial institutions they also have grant programs that you don't have to uh, request uh, you know you don't have to file for a loan they they just have grants but but uh, but applying for a grant you have to for those you might need to hire someone that can write grants and there's people that offer that services because you have to convince those entities that why you need this money and how you're going to use it so um, and then you don't have to pay it back because it's a grant I uh, actually stumbled across through LinkedIn or somewhere like that through the power of networking. And I, anyway, I connect all these dots. But there's a company out of Massachusetts called Building People, buildingppl.com. And they okay. there's workforce grants, workforce training grants, where a lot of states, it's like, unfortunately, Texas doesn't do it, but a lot of states, there's just grant money. If you want to put together a training program or all these sort of things, they'll just basically give you free money to train your people. I'm like, what? And so they, and, a, yeah. and they're the grant writers. They'll put you. They don't. They do a little bit of training in house, but they basically will put okay. together. They have a bunch of partners, right? They say, okay, you need to train on to say leadership and project management and supply chain logistics, right? And they'll say they'll pull together these experts and put together your old grant. Like, okay, well, we need a million dollars. We're going to hire them and them and them to put together this full training package. And then the government just writes them a check and says, here you go. 
It's wild. It's just and you don't have to pay it. You don't have to pay it back. <laughs> nope, it's all free money. Using other people's money. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, Kyle, you have anything before we wrap up here? Yeah, something that I probably should have asked earlier, but um, so so Haiti, when it comes to what you do, um, you're you're a broker, right? That that's what you're okay. Um, when it comes to that, I mean, how could somebody use your services exact exactly? I mean, if somebody was was fr was fresh out of school, they were wondering, hey, I need to get this from point A to point B, and they were going to call you. They wanted to pitch the idea to their project manager. You know, what exactly would you would you handle, and what wouldn't you want to handle when it comes to freight or you know, shipping, things of that nature. Absolutely. So, good question. So, pretty much uh, how I, my value proposition, I'm learning from the cohorts that I've been attending. Uh, pretty much, I'm, I, I consider myself kind of like a freelance logistics department for maybe a smaller or, you know, companies that, that they don't have maybe the, 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 the employees to do that. So, pretty much, if you need to, you know, send something somewhere, just send me the information and then I take care to vet the carriers, make sure they don't do double brokering, uh, analyze their rates and compare it to, to others and then just to give you the best option. Uh, once you approve that, uh, you know, that the proposal, then I take care of the rest. I, uh, I'm in communication with the drivers. I make sure that they, you know, that they arrive at the time that you need them on site uh, and then you know track all the way till uh, the goods are delivered handle any kind of uh, claims for for you know for some reason an accident happened and you we need to file a claim that takes a lot of time so i i can like alleviate the uh, workload of uh, you know of uh, uh, companies just taking taking uh, uh, care of all, all that uh, uh process if that makes sense Gotcha. So pretty much point A to point B, you can help manage it, and if not, you can get resources involved to make it happen. Correct. Great. Correct. It's just like a broadcast of different services. Uh, like, for example, last week I had this guy that um, he's opening a restaurant, but he's having issues with the real state of the restaurant, but he had thousands of dollars sitting in a warehouse. Uh, of a vendor that you know sold them the the, uh, the restaurant equipment and they wanted to start charging him a lot of money just to keep the, the equipment there so he called me he's like i need to take that out of there asap but the location where we were uh, uh, delivering the equipment it was a really limited access location so i needed to make sure to to hire the a, a good truck with leaf gate with a pallet jack and then with the, the drivers uh, willing to load and unload because not all drivers give that kind of service as well. So I have to analyze the whole scenario. I have to go to the warehouse, check all the pallets and then give them the proposal. So, uh, and then he didn't have to do much. He just called me, gave me the information and then I took care of the rest. So, um, you know, no, no small, no customer is a small one. I just, you know, it's just kind of like the, the whole, you know, uh, uh, service so um, just like to help people with other people's money <laughs> <laughs> well actually another question for you have you um, dealt with helping stage equipment or anything like that for example I've had many projects where the equipment's shipped from overseas it's gonna be here early before we can install it we got to stick it somewhere we don't have enough warehouse space we don't have enough space on the site we need to go either go buy some real estate somewhere or go find another warehouse space. You know, have you, have you helped with that before and, and are you able to? I have not, but I do have a great network that I know that I can find someone in my network that have done it before. And then that's the power of networking, yeah, you know, and yeah. collaboration uh, just to that. I know who to call to ask these kind of questions and then share this kind of uh, information and then just make it happen. Yeah. So in that case, you, you'd handle it from A to B and then from B to C, yes, C being just, the site. Exactly, right. Correct. Right. Exactly. It's like when it's going to arrive and then we take care of the rest. I'm just a problem solver. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 that's true. I'm a problem solver because I mean, time is money. And then you, you know, you need to focus on other things, you know, when your employees, your, your, you know, the, the project management. And then if I can help, you know, alleviate, uh, you know, workload, that's pretty much my purpose. So, if people want to get in touch with you, Haiti, how can they? How can they find you? Well, I'm all over LinkedIn. So definitely, you can find me. But you can. Uh, my website is Resilient Freight, 
uh, and or you can call me at uh, 214-210-210-9976. So. Perfect. I'll make sure all. Or just, just yeah. Or just Google resilient freight, resilient freight solutions, and you'll find me. Perfect. I'll make sure all the all your contact information is in the podcast notes. Um, is there any other advice you have for kind of the next con next generation construction managers before we wrap up here? Be resilient. <laughs> <laughs> if something doesn't work, just clean clean your clean yourself and then keep going. Just uh, be resilient. Be resilient with other people's money. Perfect. Yeah, there we exactly. Go, man. That's it. That's the one. Well, I appreciate you taking some time, Haiti, and joining us. It's Thank been fun. You guys. Yeah, thanks Thank a lot, you. Haiti. Thanks.